Okay, apprentices, step one, you show up at a kitchen sink. Both basins are completely full. The water has been rising without any usage of the kitchen faucet. There is a second story. Uh, and when they use their kitchen sink, it fills up this kitchen sink. So, step one, ask the upper residents to not use their water in the kitchen sink or their dishwasher upstairs. Step two, bucket this water out as quickly as possible. If you have two people on the job site, have one to be doing the bucketing out of the water while the other person goes upstairs and asks them to stop using water. That way you can try to eliminate the potential overflow of water from the kitchen sink. So I will be going and getting a bucket since I've already notified the upstairs resident and uh, I'm just visually checking to see if there are any pouring damaging water leaks underneath the cabinet as well. Right now the tubular connections underneath the sink are holding. So let's grab a bucket and start getting this out of here. Best place to, to flush all of this is right down the toilet. As long as you've tested the toilet in the unit and it's working, flush it down the toilet. And lift the toilet seat and lid so that if anything splashes, it doesn't splash on their toilet seat. Okay, let's get I started. I brought in a vacuum, a rack of towels, some simple green, a wrench, and a bucket. I've removed the paper filter from the vacuum so that when I'm filling this with water, it doesn't impregnate the paper of the filter and then block the airflow for the vacuum to work properly. It's better just to leave it out and use that for dust and dry purposes. Okay, let's get started. I'll start bucketing. Okay, you can see I've removed a lot of the water using the bucket. And if you have a vacuum and want to continue removing as much water as possible using the vacuum, it will be easier. Otherwise, if you don't have a vacuum available, you can put a pan underneath the P-trap and start slowly draining the water out of these two basins using that P-trap connection fitting down underneath the sink. It just may take a little bit longer because it takes a long time for that water to drain out through that slightly open tubular connection. You don't want to open it all the way and just dump it. You'll splash all the other side of the cabinet and get a mess. So better to do it slowly and uh, try and be as clean as possible. So that's what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use a vacuum and then drain the last little bit out of the P-trap if there's any. All right, so now I'm just going to slowly loosen my P-trap connection. And as long as I don't have any spraying water coming out, you can see just a little bit dribbling. Nothing too crazy. I'm going to catch the remainder of it. And slow until I see it stop. There we go. Now I can just remove the peach wrap completely. Right. Now I gotta see what I can do about getting a snake back into this line. And I don't want to run the snake through this 90 typically if I can help it because my cable will start to eat into this soft ABS plastic. So uh, typically what you can do is if you have some room on some of this line, you can cut it with a PVC cutter or a saw and then put a uh, no hub connector band a shear band, a fern co, something in the line, or you can glue back a inch and a half ABS coupling uh, when you're finished with the job, or you can add a clean out in with a little thread out clean out cap. But uh, that's what my next step is. Okay, I now have a pair of ABS cutters, ABS and PVC cutters. I'm gonna be careful not to cut back water supply line. I'm just gonna cut this in the middle, I'm trying to get you a good shot of that. 
just gonna carefully cut it right before this joint. And it should fall into the bucket. I'll scooch the bucket to catch those drips. And now I have an area I can cable into relatively safely. And when I'm done, I can add one of these fern clothes back into place, tighten it up, and we're good. Now, there's definitely a couple of schools on thought on um, cabling this line. I like to introduce water into the line and have it flush back out into the bucket while I'm cabling. That way I can tell when I've hit the clog with my cable snake. Because what will happen is the water stream that's coming back out of the fitting will slow to a stop and potentially even reverse and the water will start going down the drain. So it's a really easy way to tell um, when you've actually hit the clog. Sometimes technicians don't like to mess with angle stops because it could t potentially break and then you're responsible for replacing it. Um, I have a couple different techniques for that. One involves using a bucket in the sink, filling the bucket up using the faucet, and then having a small fountain pump pump water down through a hose and into the drain. So I'm never actually messing with the angle stops. In this case, it's a Moen um, Renza faucet, and I happen to have uh, an extra um, Moen faucet hose. And so what I do is I just disconnect their faucet hose, connect up mine, and I can just use the faucet handle to turn on and off water. And when I'm done, reconnect the hose. So that's what I'm gonna do now, get all that set up and then start snaking. Okay, here's the connection up through the sink. And uh, this is the connection between the handle and the faucet head. And the hose that goes with the faucet head is right here. Well, I'm gonna disconnect it right here. And to do so, I'm gonna press in this black clip and then pull this bottom hose out. So sometimes it takes two hands. So this camera footage may be a little unsteady, but I'll try my best to get it for you. So I'll push it in and pull on this bottom hose while I'm pushing it. There we go. You can see it's just a water, con water connection with an O-ring. So I'm going to lower this and grab my replacement hose connection. Put it up inside until I hear it click. Tuck them out and make sure it's secure. Okay. And now when I turn on the faucet handle, water should come out the end of my cutoff hose here. We'll give it a test. Okay, so let's give it a test. Make sure I get water out of the end of my uh, cabling hose. And I still have the bucket underneath this sink, so we'll catch any water that goes in here. Let's see what we got. All right, now to feed this into the pipe. I typically feed it in as far as I can get it, just so it doesn't spray right back out again. And when I turn the water on, I turn the water on nice and slow. So, move my light see better and I'll start turning on the water. I'm going to just do cold water and then I'm going to watch and see if it comes out the end of my pipe. And you can see it does. I've turned it off again. I just wanted to test that. The line is still full of water and it is still blocked. Now it's time to cable into that line as well. And I can just cable right past that pipe. It shouldn't be a problem. Get that set up. Okay, I've got you set up here so you can see the end of the pipe and you can see down into the bucket. I'm going to turn the water on nice and slow and I'm going to start to feed in my quarter inch cable. It's only a 25 foot by quarter inch cable, which is fine for uh, this kitchen sink, inch and a half kitchen sink line. It is uh, powered so you'll hear some noises while I'm running it. And I'm just going to go nice and slow and careful while the run water's running so I know exactly about how far out I've gone. Uh, before I clear the clock, here we go. Water on. Nice and slow. 
stable coming in. I'll feed it in by hand and then start running it. I've gone 25 feet with my quarter inch cable and I have not cleared the clog. That means I've got to break out my bigger snake. It's a 5 16 cable and it is 50 feet. So I'm going to try to bring that one and snake it 50 feet. But this 25 foot did not do it. I'm also going to dump this bucket while I've got the water off and everything's chill right now. I'll bring you back with the bigger snake. Okay, in this case, my machine's pretty big and this door is a little bit in the way. So luckily, this is the style of door where the IKEA hinge is easy disconnect and reconnect. There's a small latch right on the back side of the door. I'll try to show you on this lower one. Right here, you'll just see that latch that's moving. It will allow the hinge to remove the door. Same with this one. I'll just go and just be careful of the door and move it out of the way. Now I have a lot more access room. Okay we're back. We've got the larger 5 16 cable on the line. I'm going to turn the water on. It should start coming out the pipe. There we go. And I'm going to start feeding 50 feet in. to 40 feet and now I'm going to run the line out and back in out and back in a couple times right in this area just to kind of clear it up out and back in out and back in and I'm going to watch this water line and just make sure it doesn't come out and I'll push it back in I keep that water line going in there run my snake the full 50 feet out now that I've cleared this little area a bit. That way I can ensure that I'm pushing the clog all the way out to the street. That's all 50 feet, and I'm going to start removing it. But I'm also going to leave the water running while I remove it so that it helps wash my cable. I just want to keep it in the line, so I'm going to push it back in and start pulling my snake out. I've also got my Ugg glove on for the snake. So while I'm pulling the snake, I've got protection on my glove hand. 
And what I'm gonna do as well is put a rag in this can. Okay, so what I do is I grab a, a rag. I've got my glove. I'll take a little bit of snake oil, just some classic. I'll put some in the rag. I'll wrap that around the cable. There we go. I've got my dead man switch and we're ready to put the snake back in. Okay, now I'm gonna remove these gloves, put some new ones on, put everything back together, clean up and leave. Okay, I'm just gotta remove this water jug. Clear up anything down here then. May have dripped. I'll lay one new one down here just to want to protect the cabinet. I'm gonna remove my water hose. And pull it off of the faucet end. Do another quick cleanup of any spilled water. It's always good to keep your workplace clean, so I'm just trying to keep it clean and dry. Okay. Now I'm going to take the old faucet hose, get it reinstalled for them. Now I'm going to install my clamp. I'm just going to position these five sixteenths tightening clamps so that I can easily access it in the future. There you go. I'll put that one right there and this one right there.
Okay, I'm gonna put one new dry towel underneath these connections and then I'm gonna run the faucet and we're gonna see if anything leaks. Okay, so the paper is dry. So the next step is to fill these basins with water and do a full flush through that sink. There's numerous additional pieces of information and things to think about. Uh, obviously, there could be a uh, stack building with multiple floors of sinks above and people may have not been home when you tried to notify them. And even if the building HOA management sent out an email to those customers and they came home and didn't check their email and decided to turn on their dishwasher, you could be struggling with water coming out of that line at a much faster rate than I was introducing it with the kitchen faucet. Um, typically in high rises, it's uh, much riskier. You should always be on the lookout for water coming out of those pipes while you've got them open. Be prepared for that. Have uh, towels and rags and a cleaner handy. Maybe have a, a floor mat to protect the floors of the customer that's fairly absorbent. Things of that nature. There's other things too that uh, you should consider. Um, as a plumber, you've got to think about all of those things and potential possibilities, uh, stuff that could go wrong on you while you're trying to cable a line. Luckily, in this case, it turned out well, and we got in and out in under an hour. And um, as you can see there, the last couple of things I did was just dump a basin of water down and try to sanitize their sink for them. I use Simple Green. Uh, it's fairly um, safe for humans and animals. Um, and it does a good job of sanitizing the area and removing the, the drain um, material from any cabinet faces or sink basins, things of that nature. Well, I hope this has been useful and helpful to you. Hope you enjoyed and um, have a good day.